Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about V grooves. So, if we had the following V groove and we wanted to calculate the height of that V groove, we can do so using trigonometry. We know our angle and we know the distance at the opening. So with that information, we're going to calculate what this height of that V groove should be. This is the symmetrical V groove, which means that this length will be the same as this length. This angle will be the same as this angle. Because this side is equal to this side, that's called an isosceles triangle. And that means that we are able to bisect this angle. It will form a right angle with this side and this length will be equivalent to this length. So now I have two right triangles. I only need one of them. Let's take this one on the right and I'm going to redraw that. This vertical distance is called x and this horizontal distance will be half of 1.500 so it's going to be 0.750. Our angle will be half of this angle. The angle is expressed in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And if your calculator can handle using the trig functions with your angle in degrees, minutes, seconds, you can keep it in that form. I'm gonna to change to decimal degrees, and I'm gonna use the function on my calculator to change it from DMS to DD. I get 62.5125. Never round this off. You want to keep it on your calculator how many ever decimal places it goes. Now I've bisected that angle. So this angle is 31.25625. Now that I have this angle and this side, I can find x. I'm going to name my sides. This is the opposite side to this angle. This is the adjacent side to this angle. This is the hypotenuse, but I don't need it. And the trig function that uses opposite and adjacent is the tangent function. Tangent of 31.25625 degrees will equal the side opposite, which is 0.75, over the adjacent side, which is x. In order to solve for x, I need to get it out of the denominator first. And normally I would show this in a few steps, but I don't have a lot of room here. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by x, and that will cancel it on this side. Now I need to isolate x on the left hand side and in order to do that I'm going to divide by a tangent of 31.25625 degrees. Whatever I do to this side I must do the same thing to the other side. So when I divide here by the tangent of this angle it will cancel and I'll just have an x and on the right hand side I will have 0 0.75 divided by the tangent of 31.25625 degrees. And when I calculate that, I get x equals 1.2357 inches. Therefore, the height of the V groove is 1.2357. If I knew the height and wanted to find the width at the top of that V groove, I would do something very similar, except I would know this length. I would know this length here. I would still use my tangent function to find that length, and then I would double it to get the total width. However, when you're checking your V grooves, you're not going to have an instrument that is going to be able to measure this width accurately, nor are you going to have an instrument that will measure this depth accurately. Therefore, you're going to be using measuring pins to check the accuracy of your V grooves. So let's take a look at an example where we will use a measuring pin to check that accuracy. In our example, we have a measuring pin of 1.5 inches. It needs to be a precision pin. And we know from the drawings that this height is 3.25. We can't measure it from the top of this piece to the bottom of the groove. But we know that it should be that. And then we know that the distance from the bottom of the groove to the bottom of this plate is 2.75 inches. By putting a measuring pin or a precision pin in that groove, we can now measure from the top 
dead center of that pin to the bottom of our plate. We have an instrument that can measure that accurately. Before I show you how we can calculate what X should be, let's talk about tangent lines and circles. If you have a tangent line touching a circle, a tangent line touches at just one point, it doesn't pass through it. The tangent line will form a right angle with the radius at that point. So if we were to draw the radius from the center of the circle to that point, that is a right angle. That's always going to be true. A tangent line will form a right angle with the radius of a circle. So what I've done is I've drawn a right triangle by taking from the center of this pin, the center of the circle to this side. That will be a tangent line to the circle, so that will form a right angle with the radius. And then from the radius down to the bottom of the V groove. That is my right triangle. I'm going to redraw that. And I'm going to find this length here. I will call it H for hypotenuse. If I can determine this, and I know this value is the radius, I know that this amount and this amount plus this amount should be equal to x. So let's first of all find h. This length I know, it's going to be half of the diameter of the pin, so that's going to be 0.75 inches. I know the total included angle is 30 degrees 45 minutes, which is 30 0.75 degrees. And I'm going to take half of that to get this angle here. So it's 15.375 degrees. This is a right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. This is the side opposite. And the trig function that uses the opposite and hypotenuse sides is the sine function. So the sine of this angle 15.375 degrees will be equal to the opposite side of 0.75 divided by the hypotenuse. Similar to what I did in the, my first example, I need to solve for h, so I'm going to multiply both sides by h. I multiply this side by h so that it cancels, and whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. So I'm going to have h times the sine of 15.375 degrees equals 0.75. Now to isolate h, I'm going to divide by the sine of 15.375 degrees, and whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do the same thing to the other side. So h will equal 0.75 divided by the sine of 15.375 degrees. When I calculate that, I get 2.8287. I'm going to round off to four places, but I'm going to keep it on my calculator. Now that I know this h, this amount here will be the radius. So if I were to add the radius and the height, and then this distance here, that should give me x. So x will equal h plus r plus 2.75 inches. And I know h is 2.8287 inches. Radius is 0.75 inches. When we add these up, we get 6.3287 inches. That's in theory what that length should be from the top of the pin to the bottom of the plate. You are able to measure that, and if that measurement is in fact 6.3287, you know that the V-groove is cut correctly.